If you wish to follow along, turn to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Now I'm going to read the whole chapter because I have something to say, not necessarily of every verse, of course, but, but I have something to say concerning the whole context of Genesis chapter 3. And as we read this, remember, approach this chapter that it means exactly what it says. Yes, sir. It may have some illustrations. It does have illustrations. But it's also a real account yes. of what actually happened. That's right. And I will preface that by there are those who become amazed when they consider this chapter this way. Well, the serpent could actually speak? Yeah. Uh, yes, the serpent did actually speak. So enough of that. That's not the important part. Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Question, who made the serpent? Yeah. There you go. Amen. The Lord God made the serpent. Amen. Yes, sir. Period. There's a period right after that. Isn't it? I said, I don't mean period. Period. Yeah. And he said unto the woman, that is this subtle serpent, and he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And notice God put the tree right in the middle of the garden, not out in the far corner somewhere. Exactly. Hid back in behind the brush. Stood right in the middle of the garden. Yes, Just think, That's not even a message. Just think about that. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And here Satan has just enough fact yeah. to make this tempting to Eve. Exactly. But he distorts even the facts That's with his lies. Sure. Yeah. Because when they ate, as we will see, their eyes were opened. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, notice there's two things, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, there's a third thing, she took the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So he was standing right there with her. He's standing right there with her. Yeah. They both ate together. Exactly. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, mm -hmm. and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto Adam, Where art thou? And God did not do that because he couldn't find Adam. Exactly. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. <coughs> and he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Again, God was not inquiring to find out. Exactly. There's reasons why God does what he does. And it's, it's never so that God might learn something. Exactly. Never so that God might learn something. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. There's something to say about that, little boy. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. <coughs> Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow shalt thou bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. That is not God telling what might come to pass. It is what did come to pass. Exactly. 
And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the, of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the dust. For out, of the, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and into dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. Amen. And the Lord God said, Behold, man has become as one of us. One of us. Here is the one true living God calling himself an us. Amen. Think about that for a little while. He's become of one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword to which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. And men still think, are still trying to find that garden today. How unwise man is. Because while I will not say a lot about this, in my present state, I don't want to eat of that tree. Exactly. Because it is a tree of life. That's right. When you eat it, you would be exactly as you are for eternity. Mm -hmm. Amen. And Adam had already eaten the fruit and fallen. And you don't want to stay that way forever. Amen. <laughs> That's it. Now when our text says that he, Adam, did eat Right there, at that moment, Adam acted as our federal head. Yes, sir. When Adam fell, we fell in Adam. Amen. That one act. Now, there's more than one act of disobedience in Genesis chapter 3. But it's in that one singular act that Adam acted as our federal head. And when he fell, we fell in him. This is the way the Apostle Paul put it. I know there are many who don't like this, but this is just the way it is. Yeah. May God bow us to this truth. Romans chapter 5, verse 17, the first part. For if by one man's offense, and if you look at the passage, I have the right to say this is a singular offense because it goes on to talk about many offenses. Yes, sir. So when he says offense singular, it means offense singular. Yes, sir. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one. Mm -hmm. And look at verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience, singular again, for as by one man's disobedience many were, what? Made sinners. Amen. I was made a sinner before I was ever conceived. Amen. That's right. Yes, Thus, when I was conceived, and when I was born, I was conceived and born a sinner. Yes, sir. And Adam made me that by his disobedience. Yes, sir. The subsequent sins, however, the subsequent sins, however, of Adam, which are seen in our text, Genesis chapter 3, were not federal head acts. But they were the natural results of the state into which Adam fell. Exactly. You understand what I'm saying? That is, when Adam tried to make himself fig leaves, aprons, he wasn't doing it, acting as federal head for us. He was doing that because that's where he'd fell into. Exactly. That's the state into which he had fallen by taking that bite of that fruit. Yes, sir. <coughs> now think about it. <clears throat> because the divine order... And the divine decree of God at that time still stood and still stands today of this truth. Everything will bring forth after his kind. Thus, we act today as Adam acted after the fall. Exactly. That is, we conduct ourselves today in the same way Adam conducted himself after he fell. Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. And we are judged by God. If any man does ever perish, and some shall, mm -hmm. it will not be because they were made sinners. They're made sinners because Adam ate as our federal head. But we will perish in the judgment and wrath of God because we conduct ourselves in the same sinful acts in which Adam conducted himself after the fall. Sure, it's true. God does not damn men just for damning sake. Exactly. God damns because of personal, individual sin. Yes, sir. Exactly. And never misunderstand that. We believe in the absolute sovereignty of God and the predestination of all things. But God doesn't predestinate men to damnation just for damnation's sake. Right. When men perish, they perish because of their own personal rebellion. Exactly. Yes, sir. Amen. In other words, we are without excuse personally. Exactly. Amen. Because we act just like Adam acted after he failed. The only difference with us is we weren't where Adam was to start with, and we did not fall. We fell in Adam. We were conceived and born fallen. And thus we conduct ourselves just like Adam did. Why? Because we are after his kind. Remember, they had no children in the garden. That's right. They had no children before Adam fell. Exactly. They had children only after they had been driven out of the garden, and Adam had already fallen. So therefore, every human being that comes into this world is born after that kind. Amen. Born into that state into which Adam originally fell. That's the original sin. Everything else, all other sins, are a consequence of that original fall. Amen. Yes, sir. And men are individually and personally judged because of those consequential sins that we all are guilty of. Amen. Hmm. There are three sins Adam committed. And you even see them hinted at when you see Eve being deceived. There's three things. Right? Three things that caught her attention about that tree, right? And we're not gonna, I'm not going to deal with that. Because we fell in Adam. Yeah. And then we conduct ourselves like Adam conducted himself after he fell. There are three sins that Adam committed. And yeah, I'm talking about sins now because we're made sinners when Adam sinned. But we commit these three individual sins, all of us, because of our natural state in this world. Here they are. And I put them this way to just maybe catch your attention, to help you maybe remember them. I don't mean remember them tomorrow. I may not remember some of these words tomorrow. That's not the point. I'm talking about remember them right now. Here's what we do. We excuse, we enshroud, and we evade. Yeah. Right. That's what we do. These are the three sins Adam committed after he fell. He had an excuse, that is, he sought to justify himself. Exactly. Right. He covered himself by his own actions. Verse 7. Do you see it? The eyes of them both were open. They knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Why? To try to cover their own nakedness. Yes, sir. It is self-justification. It is human effort. That's it. It is seeking to solve a problem of sin by an act of my own hands. Amen. That's it. And the acts of my own hands comes out of the state of my own heart by nature. Yes. Excuse Yes, we try to justify or cover ourselves. The word even atonement is used in the scripture as a covering. Mm -hmm. A covering. In other words, we're trying to atone for our sin. But it's really nothing more than self-excuse. Self-excuse. But we also do this, we enshroud. To enshroud means to cover or to hide. Not cover as in making the fig leaves aprons, but to cover as in to hide. They hid amongst the trees of the garden. Yes, sir. That's right. And man, you and I by nature have been trying to hide ourselves amongst God's creation yes. since the get-go. Amen. That's right. Since the get-go. And notice, it's not just hide, but to hide from the voice of the Lord God. Amen. We're afraid of what God might say. Yes, sir. 
That's exactly but right. rather than bow, bow down and cry out for mercy, yeah. we will hide. We will hide ourselves from God. Yeah. And look at it, verse 8, there it is. And they heard the voice of the Lord God. Now, who do you think that is? Yeah. Amen. That's Jesus Christ, because he Amen. is the voice of the Lord God. Yeah. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Isn't that amazing? Mason, here is Jesus Christ pre-incarnate. I can't explain how or what, but here he is. And he's walking in that garden. <coughs> and they heard him. And you'd think, we fouled up. We messed this thing up. We realized something about ourselves we did not see before. And you'd think they'd say, Lord, oh voice, forgive us. Yeah. Is that what they did? No. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Right. There's the second sin we're all always guilty of. Right. We'd rather try to hide from God. Yeah. Hide from his presence. Hide from his voice. Hide from his word rather than bow down in open naked shame before him. Exactly. But there was a third sin Adam committed that we're all guilty of by nature all the time. That's evade. Yeah. You know this phrase. You'll probably get to pass the buck. There you go. To pass the buck. To either minimize or deny our responsibility. There you go. Mm -hmm. Look at what it says. Chapter 3, verse 12. Did you eat of the tree, God said? Yeah. Why did God put these questions to Adam? Not to inform God, but to force Adam to confess. Yeah. And the problem is, by nature, we always confess the wrong thing. There you go. By nature, we always either excuse, or we always are excusing, enshrouding, and evading. And here's what he said. And the man said, and his words are fact. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. His words are fact, but it was the attitude with which he said them that's the problem. Exactly. Hmm? And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, did God not give her to be with him? <laughs> yes, yes to be a help meet, to be one flesh with him. Yes, sir. Right? Mm -hmm. And the man said, the woman who thou gavest me to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. I see through his ruse now <laughs> when I did not at one time. I know now, now that God Almighty has opened my eyes in a spiritual way through regeneration by his spirit and, the, and conversion by the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ because I used to make the same excuse, blame something or someone else and eventually what we're really trying to do is blame God. Yeah. You're right. Oh, good. And let me tell you something. Yeah, God gave Eve. To, I mean, he gave her to him. Yes, sir. Her body was Adam's. And Adam's body was hers. Yes, sir. He gave her to him. But now Adam's trying to blame God. Trying to either minimize or deny his responsibility. And that's the same thing we always do today. We're all guilty of these three sins all the time in our Adamic nature. Yes, sir. That's it. This is us all by nature. And it is a threefold rebellion. Isn't it amazing how John writes these words? You don't have to necessarily turn to them, but first John. Now think about these words. 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. For all that is in the world. All. Yeah. In other words, I'm, it, John's going to give us something that explains all. You'd think that's going to take books and books and weeks and weeks and months, right? Yeah, you think so. But look at how he puts it. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. There's one. The lust of the eyes. There's two. The pride of life. There's the third one. Is not of the Father but is of the world. Amen. And all of these three things are connected to the three sins that Adam committed consequential to his fall and which we commit because we are fallen when we're conceived Amen. and born. Amen. Now consider these opposites. 
a gutter drunk, a gutter drunk now, I'm not talking about just a guy who has a beer or two or this or that. I'm talking about a gutter drunk, a guy you see laying underneath the bridge on that old dirty thing with all these wine bottles laying around. A gutter drunk or a great humanitarian yeah. gives millions to help less fortunate, that's what we say today, go, yeah. less fortunate yeah. folks than himself. Yeah. But both are guilty of these three sins. Amen. Amen. Especially when it comes to God and his truth. Exactly. And that's the whole problem with Adam. That's right. Adam never denied God was the creator. That wasn't his sin, no, sir, you're was right. it? And yet that's what most preachers are preaching against. Oh, you don't believe God's in, you don't believe in creation. You believe in evolution. That's not your real problem. Your problem and my problem is excuse, enshroud, and evade. Yes, sir. That's our problem. Here's, a, here's another opposite. A street prostitute or a fearless, virtuous battlefield nurse. Two different opposite ends of the poles, yeah. right? But both are guilty of these three sins. Amen. All will come to, when it comes to God's truth and his Christ and his gospel and God's right to reign over men, both of them will equally, you're right, Mason, excuse, enshroud, and evade. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Somebody says, not me. Yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Here's a third illustration, because there are these opposites. A drug addict with a dirty needle, or a neurosurgeon with a scalpel. Total opposite ends of the pole as far as humanity is concerned, right? But they're both guilty of excuse, enshroud, and evade when it comes to the truth of God's sovereign right in this universe. Amen. Here's a fourth opposite. <coughs> a sexual pervert or a priest? Oh, wait a minute. That's not opposite in some cases, is it? Sorry. Just had to lighten the load a little. All this sin business is tough and draining, isn't it? But am I not telling you the truth? Oh, yeah. And let me tell you, it don't have to be a Roman Catholic priest. It may be a Baptist minister, too. But be that as it may, you and I, all of us, not just these people that I've pushed out there before you. All of us, by nature, by what we are when we're conceived and born, when it comes to God's gospel, we excuse, enshroud, and evade. That's what we are. And I'm going to tell you, we can't help it. That's right. But right. we're still responsible before God. Amen. Amen. We are all guilty of excusing, enshrouding, and evading. And if you don't believe me, that's fine. But God's word in Romans 3, verses 9 through 20, I won't read it all. But it says Jews and Gentiles alike. That's two opposite ends of the spectrum, you could say. He said they're all under sin. In bondage to it. And we cannot free ourselves from it. Our ver the very sins we do manifest the very depravity into which we fail. Yeah. Because it's always in some way, to some degree or another, excusing, enshrouding, and evading. But God be thanked and praised. That's not where Genesis chapter 3 leaves us, is it? Amen, that's right. Huh? Is it? Yeah. Is it? Now, we are guilty. Yes, sir. We do the same things our daddy Adam did after he fell. Oh, but our text shows someone else acting too. Yes, sir. Does it not? That's right. Our text shows someone else acting too. And here's my subject and my title. All of that was just preliminary introduction. No, I won't be too much longer. Here's my, here's my subject. Here's my title. The Opposing Acts of Genesis chapter 3. Adam had three subsequential sins because of his fall. Yeah. And because we're like Adam when we come into this world, we commit those sins too. Yes, sir. We can't help it. Exactly. It's our nature. Yeah. But we're responsible before God. Why? Because God says so. Amen. And that's all that counts. That's all that counts. But somebody says, but... If God ordained it after his own kind, how can I be responsible? You're trying to 
excuse, enshroud, and evade, and blame God in the process. There you go. That's exactly right. So basically, Paul says, when it comes to God's sovereign purpose to shut up, what God does is right. He's the potter, we're the clay. We're all of the same lump. We're all the same lump. So that's my subject and title. The opposing acts of Genesis chapter 3. Thank God there are three opposing acts. Yes, sir. By God. Amen. In our text. <laughs> three sins committed. But God acts to make sure those sins don't damn the human race forever. Amen. Hmm? Look at it. When man runs to hide, to enshroud, mm -hmm. even before he does, God is the one seeking him. Amen. That's exactly right. Isn't that amazing? Now, does anybody here think God didn't know what Adam was going to do when he heard <laughs> him come walking through the cool of the day? Of course he knew what he was going to do. That's right. God approaches and calls out, calls us out, makes us confess, even though in the beginning we may confess many things wrongly. Oh, yeah. Hmm? Yeah, you're right. But God makes yeah. some people. Do you hear what I said? Thank God for that. Amen. God approaches some people, and God calls these people in spite of their enshrouding. Yeah. Look at it. Chapter 3, verse 8, 9. And, the Lord, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves, and God called unto Adam and said, Adam, where are you at? And that's what God first does when he starts to convert a sinner. He's going to make you confess where you're at. Exactly. Yes, sir. That's right. He's going, to make, he's going to make you confess where you're at. You think Adam could have withstood the voice of the Lord God? No. No, if you think he could, you, got a, you, don't, you don't have a high estimation of Adam. You've got a low estimation of God. Exactly. Amen. Way too low estimation of God. But there's another one. Look at the second act by God. God announces covenant promise in spite of our evasion. Amen. We're passing the buck. But then God promises that the serpent and all that happened because of the serpent. He goes, the serpent will have his head what? And the actual read, reading in the, in the old Hebrew is crushed. There you go. Crushed. Look at what it says. Chapter 3, verse 14, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, beasts. Belly shall you go. And here it is. This is the promise of, this is, this is Jesus Christ promising himself. Amen. Ain't <laughs> yes, that something? This is Jesus Christ promising himself. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, singular, yeah. singular, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Amen. This seed of the woman would suffer. Yes, sir. But the very act of his suffering would be the very thing with which would crush the serpent's head. Now, I don't know what kind of serpent beast this really was. People think of snake. I don't know. I, that's not the debate. But you ever had a snake? How's the best way to kill him? crush his head. You, you can chop him in two. Guess what, Joe? Uh -huh. He still bite the devil out of you. Yeah, you he can still kill you. That's right. Cut his tail off, you just make him mad. Yeah. You chop his head off. There you go. Chop his head off, he can still poison you. Exactly. If there is that poison still in those sacks, yeah. and he's a poisonous That's steak, right. and you reach down to grab that chopped off head, he still bite you. He still kill you. Uh -huh. But you crush him. Yeah. You crush him. He's gone. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something. Jesus Christ, on, the, on behalf of his people, his elect, his church, everyone who would eventually believe because of the preaching of this word, on their behalf, he crushed the serpent's Amen. head. Yeah. Amen. And here's the third act of God. God clothes in spite of our excuse. Amen. In spite of our attempts to self-justify. Amen. In spite, of, in spite of us trying to clothe ourselves. What did God do for Adam and Eve? Yeah. He clothed them. Amen. And then what it says? Look at it. Chapter 3, verse 21. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and ask them to put them on. Exactly. Offered it to them if they would will to have it. Uh -huh. No. 
He made the coats of skins. And everything he did everything it took to make those coats of skins. I take it that some something suffered. Died. The meat and blood and internal organs was removed. The skin was removed from all that. And God clothed them with these skins. Amen. As I've said before, as I heard other preachers say, if that don't float your boat, you ain't got a boat. There you go. That's right. Because, folks, that's the gospel. Amen. And it's right here in Genesis chapter 3. Yes, sir. And it's not, this is not a symbol. This really happened, Joe. Yes, it is. Amen. <laughs> this really happened. And somebody says, well, did he put the coats of skins over the fig leaves? I don't know, but it don't matter. What God seen was the coats of skins. Amen. That's right. <laughs> Because God was the one concerned about the coats of skins. And here's all. Did not the fig leaf aprons cover their nakedness just like the coats of skins? There you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. But God demands blood Amen. when there's rebellion against him. Exactly. And just a fig leaf apron, the efforts of our own hands won't cut it. It has to be an act of God. Yeah. Amen. And the death of Jesus Christ was an act of God. Yeah. And God clothes the people with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Amen. Take note of these five things in closing. The sinful acts are all ours. These three sins under which every other sin falls, they're all ours. The sinful acts are all ours. We can't blame God for them. All the righteous acts yeah. are all God's. Amen. You don't see Adam helping, cooperating with, or whatever. That's right. God purposed to do it. Bless God it was done. Amen. That's the gospel. Yeah. Amen. Here's the second thing to take note of. God's order of deliverance always differs from our acts of sins. Yeah. Doesn't it? It's the totally opposite, Joe. Exactly. However, a man thinks by nature. Salvation is, that's not going to be the way it is. That's right. Amen. God said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Amen. My ways are not your ways. Amen. Because God intends to get all the glory. Yes, sir. And man, because of our excusing, enshrouding, invading, we don't we become refined. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Adam was kind of caught like that. Yeah, exactly. We've become refined. We've been taught. We've got books to read. We've got all these things. Oh, yeah. Our excusing and shrouding and invading is probably even more subtle than the serpent's was. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, we say, well, God, we don't mind if you do the most of it. Just give us a little taste of the glory. Huh? That's, it. You're That's right. more excusing and shrouding and evading. Yeah. Because God says, my glory, I will not share right. with another. Right. Amen. Third thing to take note of. Christ received by an act of God yeah. is protected by God. Yes. Now look at it. And the Lord God said, Behold, man's be like one of us. But what if he, there's that tree of life. Yeah. Now here's man, look at the state he's in. Look at the state man's in. Yeah, exactly. But notice God says, Lest he put forth his hand. God's not going to give us any of the glory. Amen. Amen. It ain't about what we do. Right. Even after being clothed, then we reach out and eat the tree of life. No, sir. God drove us, drove us out of the garden. Amen. To ensure that all the acts of redemption and salvation and all the glory goes to him. Amen. Even if they could have said, okay, God's clothed us now. Adam believed God because he knew he, he died that day. But God told him, you're going to go to the dust. But he had enough faith to know God was going to keep him alive until his wife had some kids. Yeah. Until he said, mm -hmm. yeah. hmm? "But all of that, God said, now you're not even even though you're standing there clothed in these garments, it's not going to be about you reaching forth and getting the tree of life. All the glory, folks, goes to God. Yeah. You hear me? All the glory goes to God. He gets all the glory. He drove us out of the garden for our good." For our good. Because when God gets all the glory, you can be assured if you're one of those God's going to show mercy on, you're going to have it. Amen. Yes, sir. And isn't that good? Amen. Glory, here's the fourth one. Glory be to Christ the Redeemer 
from all sin, even our most righteous sins, if that's not an oxymoron to you. Because the scripture says that even our righteousnesses are as filthy rags in God's sight. Adam reaching for the tree of life. One of those, whatever that fruit was, Mason, to eat of that would have been Adam acting to keep himself alive. Adam acting to give himself life. Oh, I'll give God the credit. He made the trees. Huh? God says, no. We don't cooperate in this. God says, I get all the glory because I do all the work. Amen. <laughs> That's what it is. Even our good works as believers were ordained by God Amen. before the world began. I don't even get no rewards from God because I do some good works. That's right. Our good works are the outflow of the sovereign, free, mighty grace of God. Amen. So here's my fifth thing to take note of. Any sinners in the house this morning? Anybody see yourself here when you see Adam? When you see Eve, do you see yourself? I ask you, do you believe God? Amen. Just do you believe God? That's it. Just let go. Quit doing. Yeah. Don't even look to your believing. There you go. Just believe God. Amen. Father, may these words be of benefit to us. May they be taught us by your spirit and not by just this clay pot. I ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Let's stand and sing.